It's going to be a little bit different this morning. Obviously, we're sitting here in front of a little bar and we wanted it to be a bit different because we wanted to tell you a little bit more about our story and the story of the church and how this church came into being. Mm. As Heather said earlier, there's glory in our story so and there's real power in knowing somebody's story and just seeing the way that God has worked through it. Mm. <laughs> Throughout the whole of the Bible, God <laughs> was always instructing his people to remember and to remember their story, remember how they brought them out of Egypt and remember that the covenant that he made with their ancestors. Mm. And so every so often, God would instruct people to build a memorial and to, to, for, the, for the people to remember the story of redemption and rescue that God mm. had brought them through. And so many of you will have heard our sto story before. Um, but it's still important. It's still important to remember and to thank God for the journey that he's taken us on and for you to all realize that you're part of the same journey. Yeah. Um, whether you've been a part of this church since it began or whether you've just started joining us virtually, you're part of this story and we're part of this story together. Hmm. And so as you listen to our story, we want to say there's glory in your story as well. Uh, throughout the scriptures, you would, you would hear, read stories like Moses. He spent 40 years as a shepherd in the wilderness. Or Joseph, he spent 11 years in prison before he found his glory. Or like David, he was anointed as king, and then he had to wait 15 years for him to be appointed as king. And so with God and with our story, it's, uh, mm. there's years in, in the making. I think 2020, we want things now. We want things instantly, but I guess our story is there's been a long journey. Uh, and, and a bit like what Viv said a few weeks ago, uh, she planted some seeds. They're actually growing, They guys. are growing, they are, they are, are actually growing. growing. And um, <laughs> uh, just like a seed that's planted, it takes a while to germinate. And that's like your story and our story as and well. And our, our story, it's unfolded over time. There were often things... Uh, that happened or delays where we wondered what the heck is going on and yet God uses everything for his glory and so like every great story this happened a long long time ago <laughs> I think for Viv that happened a bit longer than mine um, <laughs> rude but I was I was born in South Africa and my mom and I moved to Tooting when I was about four and I grew up grew up in this part of London uh, before moving just down the A3 to Tolworth. Uh, in my teenage years, uh, my mom got married uh, and I didn't go to church growing up. We didn't go to church growing up. And in my early teenage years, I started and sold drugs and used drugs uh, for a living. And I, uh, but I remember the, just getting arrested again and again and again. I remember one time just walking through the woods near my house, just crying out to God saying, I want to change. Would you change me? Would you help me? And um, uh, I used to, my neighbor and I, we used to hang out the windows late at night, smoking and chatting. And he invited me to his Sunday night youth church. And I went along and uh, when I was 16, I, I, then in, I, I then began experiencing God, this person that I was crying out to. And I remember having a dramatic encounter with God where, where it was simply, I used to get high on the Holy Spirit. As I gave my life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit met me in such a powerful way that I decided I didn't need to pay for drugs anymore because I got high on Jesus. I got high on God. And, and that's what I wanted to give my life to, that, that God that rescued me, I wanted to help other people to know this God who, who loves me and who loves, who loves you as well. For me, I was brought up in Orpington with uh, my mum, my dad, my sisters, and my parents had left the Exclusive Brethren, uh, which was a cult, a couple of years just before I was born. And we then grew up being part of a Brethren church. If you can imagine the scene, no women speaking, wearing hats, obviously fitted in there really, really well. Um, and then fast forward a few years to uh, after uni, Steve and I met doing this kind of gap year called Training in Evangelism. Um, where you, uh, it's where we actually met, and you either had a placement in a church that you were already part of, or you got put into a, a, a new church. And so I, uh, Steve was put into a church, or Steve was already part of a church in Epsom, 
and I was put into this new church in Balham. And so we met on this year. She couldn't resist me. <laughs> and um, during that time, I always <laughs> felt as though God was call me, calling me back home, calling me back to London. And uh, I remember one day I got a map of London and I marked different places that I just felt God might call me to. I, and so I, I spent a day just going around different locations. And so obviously I started at West Ham as the like, number one location <laughs> that I was hoping God would, would send me. And so I would, I would go to the places, I would prayer walk there. I would ask God, give me a sense. Is this the place? Is this the place? But unfortunately it wasn't West Ham. And throughout the day, I went around different parts of London. And I think come about six o'clock, I was so fed up. I just didn't have any sense of any, any of these locations around London. And then I just felt God say, had this kind of sense of God saying, uh, you've done it your way, now let me do it my way. And he then, I, I then felt as though I should just jump on this bus that was there. So I jumped on the bus, it ended up at Hammersmith bus station. And again, I got out and I was, where am I? And God said, go on, go on, get on this bus. And then I ended up in Wandsworth, in the center of Wandsworth. And I kind of, it was familiar, it was familiar. As I got off the bus, it's probably only one or two times in my life that I've heard the audible voice of God. And this was probably as clear as I'm ever going to hear. And, and I felt God say, um, just as I led Moses and Abraham through the desert, I am now going to lead you. And over the next 45 minutes, an hour, I just had this sense to, to walk and turn left and turn right and turn left and turn right until I ended up at the back of my old secondary school, Chestnut Grove, um, which I'd never go to because I'd always come from the tube station entrance. And, and I remember looking at my school and grabbing the green handrails and just weeping as I looked at the school. And it was then God said, mm. I've called you to Balham. I've called you here to mm. Balham. And so we were part of this church here in Balham for a few years. We loved it. It was really missional focus. It was really community focus. But then um, the main leader had an affair and, and literally like everybody left London. And we were just, we were left really confused because we knew that God had called us here. We knew that he hadn't finished with us being here. And yet so many of our friends and our church had just had left really. Mm. And, but we, we tried to find a, another local church that we could be a part of, but just really couldn't find anywhere that fit. And so we ended up um, at Southwest Sunder Vineyard, which was in Putney. And uh, our son Sam had just been born. Abby was two at the time. And this church was led by John and Ellie Mumford, who uh, were the, uh, when we were first part of it, and they were the, the people that f started the first vineyard church here in this country. And I, I remember uh, John, John Mumford at the end of the service, a bit like we do here, he would kind of sometimes grab me and he would, he would kind of hold his, his arm like this and he would say, Steve, what's the Holy Spirit doing over there? <laughs> and he, in, kind of, in an in inevitable way, he would just say, what, you know, he would, I'd learn so much and we would learn mm. so much about Holy Spirit, about leadership, about ministry. It was fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, time. and it was just such a great place of us making friends, of healing, of safety. And then um, we, about 14 years ago, we, we then kind of went through a really, really rough time in our marriage um, where so many things came to a head and we very nearly didn't make it. We were really close to getting divorced and it was a pretty horrendous time, but with a combination of counselling and I have to say just an absolute miracle from God, mm. he saved our marriage and it's actually our wedding anniversary tomorrow, 24 years. And it's just absolutely <laughs> quite incredible that we've made it to here. And I think that it was a real turning Same. point in us where we were able to go, do you know what? God has saved us. He saved our marriage. Mm. We need to go all out for God. And so we just wanted to dedicate our lives back to God because what had God had done for us, we wanted to dedicate. A bit like Hannah in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Uh, she couldn't conceive a baby, but then Sam, God provided a miracle baby called Samuel. And, and her natural response is, God, I want to dedicate my life. I want to dedicate Samuel to you. And so it was a bit like for us. Mm -hmm. we, were, 
we just want to go all in. We want to push all of our chips in and just go all in. We want to dedicate the rest of our lives because of what God's done for us, the miracle he's done for us. Um, we wanted to go all in for Jesus, all in for faith. And, you know, fear says, what if? But faith says, even if. And that's what our place was. We were just, well, even if, despite our brokenness, even if, even if, let's just go all out for Jesus. And so we, we knew that because God had done it for us, he could do it for others. And that's where we started taking even more risks with prayer. Uh, we started healing on, on the streets nine years ago with just this simple quest, really, just that God has, God has done a miracle in us. Can we see hundreds of people uh, receive miracles from Jesus. And, and over the last nine years, it's been extraordinary as we've, as we've mm. watched people healed, watched people encounter Jesus on the street. We've seen so many people healed, so many people encounter Jesus. And all of those years ago, God had clearly called us for Balaam. And we began to kind of think, well, maybe there is a reason why we're here in Balaam. Mm. And so then fast forward to 2012, uh, we were at a big Christian festival called New Wine, big summer festival, tens of thousands of Christians there, which is an interesting experience in itself. Um, but our, at, at one of the meetings at the big, big top, uh, people were praying for me, and I just hit the deck. I kind of went back and hit the deck, and I was out, out for the count. And in those times, I had this series of sort of visions and thoughts and senses, but one of them was, uh, was this kind of Google map picture of this part of London, and in there were these hubs, almost like these centers of fire and light across uh, this part of London. And they were all linked like an underground tube map. And uh, in these fires, people were walking into these fires, uh, walking into these lights, being transformed, and then <laughs> taking that light with them, whether they're at work or whether they were at home or whether whatever was going on. And, and more and more people were, were being impacted. And it was as if, uh, during that time, it was as if God was saying to us, uh, sorry, the other vision that I had was then, just in that Google map, was then in Balaam, uh, I saw Viv and I and our faces just there and just linking to the, all, all the other sort of hubs of fire. Mm -hmm. And I felt God say, I just had the sense of God saying that he's putting church planting back on the map. And we'd kind of pretty much discounted ourselves from ever doing that. Yeah, so it yeah. was just it was just such a an incredible time. It really was. And, it be, and I felt as though God was downloading a bit of a blueprint about the church that he wanted to build here in, in this part of London. You see, I think our story is that God has used ordinary, broken people uh, who are just willing and available, really, um, it's more about our willingness and our availability, right? less about our expertise or our abilities. And that's the same for you as well. It's more about your mm. willingness and your availability for God, not so much about your experience or your skills or your expertise. Or your nice, shiny Christian life. Yeah. And so that was that one day, which was incredible. The very next day, our pastors from South West London Vidyard, we met in a field in Somerset at New Wine, and uh, they began to say, actually, God had been speaking to them about us church planting into Balaam. And so it was just an amazing couple of days as God had been speaking to us, and then God had mm. been speaking to our pastors. Um, and so I joined the staff team uh, at South West London Vidyard, and I was their outreach and compassion uh, pastor, and I led all of those ministries of the church. And so over the, over the next couple of years, we were then part of Vineyard's uh, church planting training, and we just started to dream and scheme mm. and pulled on some of the things that God has spoken to, to us about in the vision. And we wanted to be a church that would make a difference in the community, that if the church shut down in 10 years' time, would the community actually notice and we, we were really loath to start Sunday meetings initially. And so we carried on running Healing on the Streets. And then after being officially commissioned nearly almost exactly five years ago, um, we led a team of uh, 10 people, 
10 adults, our kids, our dog. And the first thing Abby we did... I would also say a cat. And our well, cat, and our yeah, cat. sorry, don't forget the cat. Um, and then w the first thing that we did was that we started Ballam Job Club. And we just helped, uh, invited people in who needed jobs, who needed to be coached, needed a CV, needed help with confidence building. And then we just started various clothes collections for refugees in Calais and then um, later on in Syria. And we were just blown away by the response in the community. But we kept being asked by people, like, where do you meet? When do you meet? And so reluctantly, if we're honest, we started gathering people on a Sunday as well and inviting people to join us on mission or just join us in discovering who Jesus is. Right at the beginning, we felt as though Isaiah 61 was to be our mandate as a church. Mm. Um, this was the first scripture that, that we read out on our first Sunday gathering. Mm. And we want to read it together now. Mm. So Isaiah 61, starting at verse 1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. And so this text is just a springboard of uh, what we're about as a church. Um, we're, what we want is first and foremost, the spirit of God on us. Uh, we just think that's the key to everything, that as we move and operate with the presence of God, then in prayer, we can start to see lives transform. We can start to bring life to our community with the spirit of God upon us. Uh, we know that God is a God of miracles. And we know that God can literally transform people's lives. Mm. Um, and our kind of role, really, if you think, go back to the blueprint, our role is just to simply be available and, and be Jesus' hands and feet to a hurting city in need. We want to make practical differences in, into people's lives. Mm. And so go back to 2012, there were these kind of two missions, really, of the church. Um, we were kind of, how, can, how far can we push compassion how far can we push compassion as, as possible? But also, how far can we invite the miraculous power of God into people's lives in everyday moments? Mm. And so we have these two hands of the church. Uh, compassion through generosity and being supernatural, but being normal. Please, let's be normal about the supernatural. Let's not go weird about it. We have a miraculous God and he uses normal, ordinary people like you and I to display his extraordinary power. And so later on, as we went to becoming a multi-site church, we, na we changed the name of, so we were Ballin Vineyard Church when we started, but we couldn't be Ballin Vineyard Church in Battersea. And so because of the mandate that we have with Isaiah 61, we changed our name mm. to, Isaiah, to Vineyard 61 in line with the, the mandate that we have as a church to change the city. And so as we began, as we began gathering on, on Sundays, we, we're just simply asking people, come and join us on this mission. Uh, we've always made the bar, for, bar really low for people who are exploring faith, finding Jesus for the first time, people who are atheists, agnostics. They're just welcome in our, in our community. And we want to set the bar quite high for, for believers, for, pe for people who follow, for, who follow Jesus, mm. uh, but also inviting people to engage with the mission and vision of this, this church. Just before we planted, we had a number of prophetic words spoken over us as a church. Someone said to us, the, the well-known saying is you can't run before you know how to walk. But for you guys, it's more like get ready to run before you've learned how to walk. And that's definitely how it's felt for us and how it still feels for us. We didn't imagine that we would grow as quickly as we did. And so two years in, we were full on a Sunday morning in Balham. And we started to wonder if the vision mm. that Steve had had in 2012 was for now. What if God was calling us now to, to have numerous hubs of fire and light across this city? And so we started an evening service. And then as the morning filled up again, 
we started to feel as though God was calling us to mm. Battersea. And so we started the site there just over a year ago. And we're still dreaming and asking God, what's next? Mm. There was a, another real key prophetic word, even right at the beginning. And um, it just felt too big at the time. But mm. it, ju it was just, I also saw the Lord saying that his vision for you is even bigger than you currently see. The vision is bigger than what you can see within your reach, leading to hunger and total dependence upon him. He wants to spread it out further, wider, into surrounding areas. There is always more. And this is where we're at today. God's vision for us as a church and his vision for London yeah, is absolutely. bigger than we can see yeah, or yeah. we can imagine. And we just need to run to mm. him. We're so in need of his presence mm. and for Jesus to be the focus just in everything mm. that we do. There are various moments in our story that we have as anchors for our faith. Mm. And could this be one of them? Could this, could this be a time for you and I in this moment of lockdown where huge mustard seeds of faith are planted? Maybe God is calling you to be telling your story to your friends, mm. to your neighbours. Mm. I, lo I love the quote, you can argue with someone's opinion, but you can't argue with their story. Mm. And it's so true, isn't it? People love hearing stories and they're longing to hear your stories, stories of redemption and rescue, stories of how you met Jesus and the difference that he's made in your life, mm. the hope that he's given you. Jesus constantly told stories to get into the hearts of people. And so what story has God called you to tell? Yeah. What difference has Jesus made in, in your life? Let's bring him glory by telling our story. And so um, God has called us to Balaam, uh, but in the back of our minds is this call of God to the beyond. Never would we imagine we'd be sat in an almost empty hall with cameras and lights and wires and telling our story in front of a camera to a, an online audience. We'd never, ever imagined we'd be doing that. Um, our dream was that, our dream was would our community notice? People who are jobless, people who are in the middle of divorce, people who are uh, in financial difficulties, people who are depressed, anxious, suicidal, people who need Jesus. Our dream was that the, the church would be the, in the first thing that they think of, in the first thing in their mind, mm. they could find a church uh, nearby. And so we love the joy that we see when people are healed on the streets and now healed on Zoom calls virtually. Uh, we love the fact that we're now so much more visible on the high street and now online. Um, and as we grow as a church on mission, we believe that God is raising up and continuing to raise up future leaders, future ministry leaders, leaders in the workplace, leaders in industry and leaders in church. Mm -hmm. um, but God is creating a story all the time. And you and I are discovering the story of God kind of wrapped up, woven into your normal everyday moments. Uh, we just want to say, um, maybe the very area that you are most broken in is the very area that mm. God not only heals and restores, but also he uses for his glory. And so just like Heather said, there's glory in your story. He uses you and I to extend the kingdom of God in uh, every way and mm. in every day. God is really in your story. Uh, we also just believe that there's hope in your brokenness. Mm. There's rest for anxious minds. There's peace in the middle of chaos. And uh, we just want to invite Jesus into your story. God is giving you and maybe giving you just where you are in lockdown. God is maybe giving you a vision for your future story. We want to, uh, we have this kind of, we, as we were talking and praying about different things, we had this, just this sense that maybe God is wanting to prompt you specifically uh, to tell someone else your story, mm. your story, maybe how you met Jesus or how you are beginning to meet Jesus. Yeah, I think um, I had a real sense this morning just of, you know, when we were talking about just going all out for Jesus, so I just had a real sense that it, I think in pre-lockdown life, sometimes it's easy just to have Jesus as a little add-on to your life. You've got all these different compartments and then Jesus is, is just a nice little add-on and church is a little add-on. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit is maybe starting to convict some of you to 
to go, do you know what? It is, I've just got to go all out for Jesus. Yeah. I've yeah. got to push all of my chips onto the table. This isn't just like a little add-on um, addition to your life, but this is like, no, I've got to go all in for Jesus. And this, is, this life is just about surrender. It's surrendering to God, but he's really good mm. and he's really trustworthy and he's really worth surrendering everything to. Mm. So just as we uh, spend a bit of time in worship right now, I just want you to be thinking about that. What areas of your life do you need to surrender? What areas of your life are you kind of like keeping back from God mm. to just go, do you know what? I'm just going to go all in. Mm. He is so worth it. And then the other thing was just like, maybe, you know, something of what we've said about marriages. Maybe you're struggling at the moment um, with your own marriage. Don't put your hand up too late. Put your hand up while, it's, while you can still talk and while there's still hope. And we want to say there is hope for every marriage. And um, HDB, I know, they're offering a free online marriage course at the moment. That do that, like while mm. the, even while you're re you're really mm. you've got a good relationship. Mm. Um, we spend so much money on our doing our MOTs for our cars, but do an MOT on your marriage. Mm. So let's pray, and then uh, we're just going to hand over to Matt. He's going to lead us in worship, and then we'll will invite people to receive some ministry. So Holy Spirit, I thank you for the glory in people's stories. And I pray as we worship you again, that Holy Spirit, we invite your, your golden thread into our stories. Amen.